everyone, my name is Matthew, he's Jeffrey, and we are from Fire Dragoon. Now, what we do is that we are a professional esports organization. What that means is that we salary professional players to play in games to compete in tournaments. Currently, we have six games that we cover FIFA, League of Legends, Dota 2, Overwatch, CSGO, and FIFA Online 3. Now, what we provide for these players is that we give them a place to train, give them facilities to just sit back, relax, and just focus and play. We also provide them with a backroom staff, coaches, managers, whatever you can think of, as well as a marketing team to help market themselves into the public so that everyone knows about them. And yeah, that's about it, right, Jeffrey? Yep, that's about it. Yeah. Right, so the next question is, can you give us an overview of the eSports ecosystem in Malaysia? Right, that's, that's you. Uh, in terms of the overall ecosystem of the uh, competitive uh, esports industry in Malaysia, what we have is uh, it's a very very fast growing industry. Uh, just in a span of few months, few years, you can see uh, many organizations coming up and tournaments are being rated up to a few millions and billions of dollars. So it's something to look forward to and I believe that it will also open up a lot of opportunities for players alike as well as uh, people who are in the industry. What do you think? I think what he said, I agree. Uh, basically, the ecosystem is, uh, I feel it's fair to say it's a catch up thing where you see esports has already been so well established in Western countries and in Korea because Korea has been doing it since like 10 years ago. So, right now, the Malaysian companies are uh, starting to realize that you know esports has actually a really big growth potential where the market is so targeted to you know 18 35 year old males. There was this study that said that you know the esports market was there, and you know, companies are starting to realize that hey. There's this market that you can directly penetrate. Why not focus more onto it, and then we can actually connect with the younger generation with this. So more and more companies are starting to realize that you can put in more money and go straight for it. Yeah, and this doesn't just apply to just normal players because uh, the industry alone consists not only on players, but also people from, like the management side, the business development, sales, marketing, branding, social media. Like it involves a lot, of, a whole new spectrum of. Uh, career opportunities and it actually helps to build the industry as a whole. Alright, so the next question is uh, how do you differentiate between what, what is the difference between the esports industry, the league and uh, traditional sports league? Maybe you can share since you're handling a team actually at this time. So basically what's different at the moment in Malaysia is that the league is not uh, okay so traditional football league is like you know take for example a BPL or even like the Malaysia Super League. You have um, leagues that run through months or even like uh, like one whole year and what they do is that they share the revenue with uh, the broadcasting so like for example um, Sky Sports actually covers BPL and what they do is that the EPL actually negotiates with Sky Sports and say that hey if you want to broadcast our league you need to pay us a fee and that fee actually reach this read sorry that fee is actually redistributed to the clubs so that's how traditional league runs, you know, they actually earn money from just redistributing yeah. <laughs> They actually run from redistributing their show what their image rights, right? You can I say that. Right now in Malaysia it's not as advanced yet. We are trying to push into that matter. But right now it's just basically go to tournament, try to win as much money as possible. And the tournaments are what sometimes it's just one off tournaments, it's one weekend or sometimes it's just two to three months and that's about it. So it's still far from what we want to see from traditional sports where it's a month long league and it's more stable for the players. Right now it's still very, you know, living paycheck by paycheck where they really rely on tournaments to survive. So hopefully, you know, in the years to come, Malaysian leagues will be more towards the traditional side. Yeah, very long answer. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, basically how we can compare these two uh, styles is that uh, traditional sports actually goes very physical. Most of the things that they do is requires physical strength. Uh, if you're playing badminton, you're playing football, you require a lot of uh, uh, basically training. <coughs> yeah, physical training. But when it comes to esports, what's the, the the barrier that exists? Yeah, which the which differentiates traditional and esports is that uh, you do not need to have those. You can be short, you can be tall, you can be thin, you can be lean, you can be strong, or buff. But everyone plays on the same level because everything is done online. So this is one of the main differences when it comes to traditional sport and esports. Yeah, use his answer. His answer is better. <laughs> <laughs> right. Too long winded, lah. Yeah. You. Yeah. <laughs> <But> <laughs> answer <laughs> is more business minded. <laughs> right. So the next question is, uh, what do you think 
what are the different types of roles available in this industry and what are the requirements to work in these roles and what are the salaries right <laughs> well there are a lot of different roles in esports uh, but i will probably take on the uh, management and business side but i will allow uh, matthew to actually discuss more on the uh, team's uh, perspective but from the management and operation side we have a lot of things uh, that can be done for example just in fact to myself we actually have uh, an operation team it consists of writers uh, graphic designers photographers videographers editors motion graphics like all these kind of roles are actually needed so that they can actually support the team in all their activities for example if your team goes to a tournament you need someone to cover uh, the event you need someone to shoot photos of uh, your players to make them look cool you need designers to put everything up online so they can start promoting them so these are some of the roles that the management side has to do and then when it comes to the uh, sales and marketing part of it we have uh, people who focuses on basically marketing them uh, getting income for the company as well for the players uh, these are some of the roles that, that you have in the management side yeah. what about the uh, esports team side the esports team side is slightly different obviously he uh, touched on management the esports team side is really focused on the players itself so first of all you need players you know you need players to just go to competition right and you need people to actually manage the players What you want to do is that you want to play just focus on playing the game and not worry about things such as you know when is the money going to come in? where are we going to go for a tournament how will we go to tournament you want them to purely focus on playing so that's where the managers come in and then you need people to actually help them psychologically right that's why you see a lot of like uh, esports organizations in the western scene they actually hire sports psychologists because esports and sports is actually very similar you have a lot of like mental blocks that our athletes actually hit so you actually need sports psychology to talk to them and nurture them tell them about their problems and move on from that and also you need like every other sports you need coaches to teach them about the game and how to improve you know it's all to say that when you're outside of the whole thing you can have a clearer picture so coaches actually we actually employ coaches to come in to actually teach the players and help them grow further yeah. all right last question uh, any advice for someone who wants to enter this industry Well basically it's the same thing that I'll say with any other industry right you need passion and just the eagerness to want to see the e-sport and see the growth understand that the e-sport industry is still very small you know it's not compared to like a normal advertising agency or anything else and the thing that needs to drive you is one thing to see this small thing grow into something huge you know when you wake up in the morning when you walk into the office or whatever right you want to see that hopefully in a year's time when you tell people that hey I work in the e-sports industry people won't say what is that you know right now whenever I explain to my friends hey what do you work at it oh when I'm very really lazy I just say I work in advertising agency because that's basically what we are when I'm really more hard working I have to spend like half an hour to explain what this e-sport industry is and you know I want to get to the point that hopefully we don't need to explain anymore and in order for that to happen you just need to have that you know that eagerness that hunger that passion to just keep on going to make it big Well, since you explain about how, like, what do you need to enter, I'll tell you how to enter. Uh, in order to enter esports, previously it's not as easy because there's not many organizations around. So literally at that time, we have to basically pay to actually try to get into esports. We have to create our own content. We have to write our own articles. We have to basically be good in our game. Uh, but right now, we can see organizations around Malaysia that are starting to pop up. Uh, we can see organizations like like every good like. People like us, then what we can do is really like to just try to get in with your passion. Because at the end of the day, uh, all of us have to understand is that this industry is a growing industry, and it's not it's not something that is already well built. So the most important thing in a person right now for esports is you need to have that value that you think you can contribute. And if you have that value, I would I can guarantee you that any organisations around Malaysia will want to bring you in. Yeah, just. Just keep on going, right? Just, just do. Don't think. Just yes. do. That's that's a saying that I say. Like, if you want to get into esports, just do something. Yeah. Get in. Don't think about what you can do. Just do it. Hey guys, this video was made by Future Lab in collaboration with Fire Dragoon. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and share the video. Bye. Bye. Bye.